So we're going to be looking at standing waves on a string. So let me talk about some things I have going on here. I know there's a lot of cables and wires going around. So I have our, the Pasco string vibrator. And this right here is the sine wave generator. So we can change the driving frequency of the, of the string vibrator. And so I'm going to just connect this up here with some banana cables. And we'll make some, some final measurements. Of course, we always measure with an aluminum meter stick now because that's what we do. So it just needs to be a little bit higher. All right. Good, good, good. All right. And then all, that, all this stuff happening over here, I have strobe modules, which is going to get very interesting on the camera, I bet, because they're facing that way. And so what we can do is we can strobe the string as, as a standing wave is happening, and we can see what that looks like and basically freeze that wave in space, which is really cool. Um, so let me, let me talk about that. We've got an elastic cord over a pulley with a mass hanging from it. That's about 500 grams. And so let's, let's say we remove that mass first. And so I just have this elastic cord here. Now you'll see it stretches. And the great thing about this cable here, this cord, is it's great for demos. It's really um, easy to see in a classroom environment. So it works great for demonstration. So if I turn this up about there, and if you can see, I'm driving at about 40 hertz. And you can see this string, just as it's hanging there, is already starting to wiggle around. But what you want to do as a demo with your students is just to, as you're introducing them to the concept, just pinch part of the string at the end, and that's going to be your fixed endpoint or your, your boundary. And then just apply a little tension, and you'll see you can set up standing waves just by applying the correct amount of tension. So you have a length, you have a fixed amount of tension, and you can find standing waves where you have a series of nodes and anti-nodes. And so as you pull it and change, when you hear that bouncing, that means it's, it's reaching resonance. So you can turn down the amplitude on the sine wave generator to um, quiet that down, right? And so you can see there, I've got, I got my boundary on each end, and I've got two nodes in between. If I pull it a little bit more, can I find another one? Eh, not really. Once tension's going to be a little bit too high. Now, what I'm doing here is actually pretty complicated because I'm changing the tension and the length at the same time. And that's typically not how you're going to do a lab. But just as a demonstration for your students, showing them that the things that affect the standing wave or the resonance modes is length and tension. So you can start with that. Then we want to fix some of the parameters. And the first parameter we're going to fix is we're going to have a fixed tension and a fixed length. So then we can investigate, well, what are the, you know, what are the frequencies that will cause standing waves? And the, the fundamental, where we get half a wavelength here, which would be n equals 1, We'll try and find that by tuning the sine wave generator and find what frequency gives us that first fundamental. So if I turn this up right now to where I had it, you can see it's way too high of a frequency. So we'll go down and, and see if we can find that first fundamental. And so the fundamental is going to be half a wavelength. So we can kind of play around. And, and what you're really looking for when you do this is you have a boundary there. And this right here at the end of the, um, of the string vibrator, you want this to be a node right there as best you can. It's, of course, it's going to be oscillating. But 
what you'll notice is that as you change the frequency, you can actually move the node out onto the string. And that's not what you want, because we want to know, because we, we want to measure, we want to be able to measure that length from end to end. Right? So somewhere around there. And then we will, on the sine wave generator, I'm able to store that frequency. Now that's stored, and now I can increment up. And just with one hit of a button, it's going to take that frequency and double it. And now you can see, have a node here, two anti-nodes, and I can keep doubling that frequency. I can adjust the amplitude as I go up. And you can see, I can just keep finding these modes. just by changing the, um, the frequency and just kind of, and, and when the, it gets high enough, you'll start here at once it gets into the audible range. Now it's, as it gets higher in frequency, the amplitude keeps getting lower and lower, right? So maybe we can, if we can maybe dim the lights a bit. And then, so that's 30 hertz right there. Um, how's that? That's annoying. <laughs> you wouldn't do that to your class. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if I, yeah, if I turn, if I turn these around, does that help? Are you at 30? No, no. I'm saying, is that like uh, freaking the camera out? Okay. There we go. Right. So now what I've done is I've taken the strobe and I've um, I've taken the frequency slightly out of phase, so you can just watch that wave evolve through time. And if I freeze it, then you'll see it stop. And once I match the frequencies up, right? So there I've kind of I've frozen that at we know what, what looks to be the maximum there. The other control here is I can change the intensity. And so that was a, pr is, and let me know if the camera's picking that up or not. That's good? Okay. So you can adjust the frequency, or the frequency and the, the brightness. And so what happens when you adjust that brightness, it's, it's uh, changing the pulse width of these LEDs that are flashing. And so if I take this slightly out of phase and you see it, moving around. Because I've taken the intensity down, I get a much finer detail on the string, right? It's yeah, because it's, it's not pulsing for as long. If I increase the brightness, you're going to see it's going to make the string f uh, blur a little bit just because it's pulsing for longer. All right, that's cool. And then, and then let's, let's increase this frequency again. So now I'm at 45, and I'll change this to 45. You can actually make it straight. Yeah, you can freeze it when it's. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So now we're up to 60. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, take it one hertz out of phase. So you can see it kind of wiggling there a bit, right? So that's cool. There's another thing we can do. I'm going to drop the frequency back down. Oops, that was actually going the other way. I'm in the darkness. I can't really, like, totally see what I got going on here. <laughs> so that's actually a pretty neat effect. Yeah, so now, so now it's pulsing. It's strobing, sorry, at twice the frequency. So we're getting like a, a, double, a doubling effect there. There we go. How's that? Well, that's awesome. The, um, the strobe has another feature, which is you can connect a Pasco photo gate up to it. And instead of the strobe just going automatically, what I'll do is I'll change the mode to trigger. And it's going to trigger off this photo gate. So if I come in, what's that? Oh, 
Oh, I got to turn it off. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So now, every time it's blocked, it gives a flash like that. And so then we'll just come up here. And so now you see, as I move this photo gate through this standing wave, what it's doing is it's, it's freezing that wave in space for the position that I've blocked it. But it looks like you're dragging the string with yeah, the photo gate. Right. Now, OK. So everything I'm doing here is great for demonstrations. And the elastic string, like I mentioned earlier, great for demonstration. It's not the greatest string if you're going to do the lab. And that's because um, the string doesn't have a consistent linear density as you stretch it out. As you stretch it, you're changing the linear density, and that's going to make your calculations all weird. So um, what we do when you I mean, you can do it, plot it for different tensions and, and stuff like that. But what we're going to do, there's definitely an order of operations here. You want to remove the mass first. <laughs> right? <laughs> OK. <clears throat> so now we're going to remove this string vibrator. I have a second vibrator with a different kind of string, one of our favorite strings, which we call the, uh, we call it physics string. Because it is so good for doing physics labs. If you caught me and JJ some, some time ago, we actually showed you the Pasco massless physics string. All right, so this string, yeah, it sold out immediately. This string has a different linear density. And so you'll find that calculations with this are much better. They work very well. And so the other thing I'm doing as I'm lining this up is just straightening things out so we get nice, super awesome vibrations. Good, good, good vibrations, right, JP? Good vibrations. That's right. And then we will power this up using the string vibrator like that. Um, I've already uh, done the calculations, so I know that so I know that the fundamental should be around here. Yeah. All right. Nope. So somewhere around there. Is that does this show that string? I know this is a very small string. Is a camera? Can you even see that? <laughs> Uh, maybe that helps a little bit. Yeah, so this is, um, this is a, a very low density string. Oh, look at that. Oh! Of course, we can strobe it too. <laughs> and then I can, again, step through the modes. Oh, yeah. Woo! So things, you know, so we are. Because we're keeping the length fixed and we're finding frequencies, you know, as you're explaining this, you know, how all this works to students, the, you know, varying the, you know, how can we increase the frequency? So the wave speed is a function of the square root of the tension over the linear density. So we could change, increase the frequency by increasing the tension. And if, um, if you play a musical stringed instrument, then you know, as you tighten the string, the frequency goes up, you can change the length, and again, if you play an instrument, as you decrease the, um, the length that the string can vibrate, the frequency goes up. That's why, you know, guitar players, when they're jamming, they're like this, because they're really shortening the, the vibrating length of the string to get those really high notes. So, um, and so with this string, we can actually get, you know, you can actually hear it 
do some pretty high frequencies here. The amplitude is so small at this point, it's within the width of the string. But you can really hear those modes. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. All kinds of cool stuff. So that, in summary, is the string vibrator with the sine wave generator and the strobe system that allows you to do some really good demos in your classroom. And the really nice thing, Brett, is that this is actually very low tech for some really high level concepts. Isn't yes, it? it was really nice not having to use like a computer on this demo. Right, yeah, we didn't, <laughs> have to, we didn't really have to collect data, we were actually able just to watch it yes. uh, and, and get the concept across. Very Absolutely. nice demonstration. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brett Sackett.